Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will talk about the k-nearest neighbor algorithm that you can use in case of classification and prediction regression tasks. So let's first see what is KNN. So as I mentioned it is a very simple method for doing the classification and regression algorithm and in case of classification the new data points get classified in a particular class and in case of regression the new data gets labeled based on the average value of k nearest neighbor. So k is the value that we usually provided to the algorithm by uh, let's say as an experiment or maybe from your past knowledge that how many neighbors you really want uh, into a particular class. You want 5 neighbors, 10 neighbors, 21 neighbors. It, you can basically experiment it or based on the past learning you can you can apply on it and get the uh, outcome either in the case of classification or in the case of regression. We will look in the next slide how what is a general uh, rule of thumb to identify the best k value uh, by looking at the number of data points. Well here in the second case I want to show you that uh, it's a lazy learner because it doesn't learn much from the training data but but most of, the, most of the learning happens from the live data and that's why it is called a lazy learner. Next thing is that it is a supervised algorithm because we know in advance uh, the, about the data, about the target variable and the experiment happens in a, in a supervision. Uh, that means you know and aware about what you are what kind of data it is and what kind of outcome that you are really looking for. Well, the next is the uh, method that gets applied to look, create uh, or to know the uh, neighbors based on the Euclidean distance. There are a couple of other techniques like Manhattan and others which you can apply and do an experiment to figure out which one is giving you the best results. But if you don't apply anything, the Euclidean distance method gets applied and shows you the data in, or predicts or the gets the uh, neighbors based on the distance that you are specifying. So as I said k uh, in the next slide we will get to know the value of k which means uh, here as I am specifying k gets decided based on the square root of data points. So for example suppose you have uh, 1000 data points then the best way to start with assigning the k value is 100 that means the 100 neighbors you want to consider that means uh, there will be some around 10 classes in which uh, your uh, data points will be classified and uh, that's just generally a good start uh, to look at uh, the square root of the data points and then experiment with the nearest value let's say you want to experiment with 95 k k value or maybe 105, 1010 that means somewhere near about the uh, square root of data points will give the best outcome. That's what uh, mostly we have seen uh, in the real time scenarios. The second one is the data normalization that means we need to basically normalize the data before uh, we want to apply the data on the algorithm. If uh, So what data normalization mean in this case is basically uh, if you look at your data points, your data points have a lot of ranges. For example, age of a person and height of a person has a different range altogether where age can be in the range of let's say 1 to 80 and height in centimeters can be in the range of let's say 120 to 180 or 200. So, th so these are like two different ranges and if we apply it on it, the KN algorithm deviates more towards the range which has more depth and that's why it is important to normalize the data before you apply or you apply the KNN algorithm on the data. So data normalization we will see how we can do it. There are a couple of methods uh, by which you can normalize the data. And third one is the uh, requirement to implement the KNN algorithm in R where you need the installation of class library by simply install dot packages command if you don't have but if you already have then no problem but you need to import the class library to implement it. Now let's see the uh, KNN algorithm in an action but before I show you let's see the data set that we are going to use which is from the UCI machine learning repository and this is the uh, link 
uh, if you want to use it or in Google simply type uh, UCI machine learning repository it will give you this link that's what I did so from that I am using the breast cancer data uh, the diagnostic data which has uh, 569 data points and 32 variables and if I click on here it will show me the data folder from where I can download the uh, W dbc.data I have already downloaded but if you want to download you need to right click and click on the save link as and it will start downloading the data in the format dot data extension all right let me uh, go to my um, environment in the R and let's first uh, pick up the data set which is uh, WDBC so WDBC if I write it to create a data frame object and I will say read dot table because uh, the data is with the extension dot data so I'm just specifying a generalized statement and I will say file dot choose so that a pop-up will appear to me where I can from where I can choose the file and I'm specifying the separator as comma because when I looked at the data set, it was a comma separated. So that's how I know. If I enter, this is the WDBC data set. And here I have the WDBC with 569 observation and 32 variables. If I want to look at it, I will say view and WDBC. Here are these different uh, variables. So if we look at, if look at the data, you know, it has different ranges like variable 26 uh, is having a ranges which is in hundreds and thousands whereas if variable 23 if you look at the data it's it's in tens uh, in somewhere around the tens where 23 24 25 not even in hundreds so that's why it is important to generalize it and uh, if you look at the first and second variable then you can identify that second variable is where you know the categorization or factor variable is present uh, and that's basically our target variable and it has the value M and I think another value it, it should have uh, Which is B the kind of uh, pre uh, It's basically a target variable which we need to predict and the first variable from the uh, Documentation I figured out that it's basically an ID. So we need to exclude it. So WTBC and if I go WTBC comma minus one that means all the row exclusive of first variable I enter the first variable is gone and I'm good now uh, next thing is about uh, normalizing data so for that we need to write uh, uh, a function uh, so that function is basically uh, going to normalize the data between the range of 0 and 1 so the function suppose uh, data underscore norm is the function name I want to give and I want to create a function and within the parenthesis I want to specify um, minima, uh, x that means a value minus minimum of x that's basically a standard one so I, I already know it so that's why I'm just going ahead and showing it to you minimum of x divide by uh, maximum of x minus minimum of x it will basically going to uh, help us creating a range between 0 and 1 so if I enter I have the function created and now I want to create the normalized data wbdpc underscore norm I am creating a new data set which is having the normalized value and I am saying that uh, I want to apply the I'll apply function list apply to iterate the function over each of the variable but I want to uh, store it in a data frame object so I am writing as dot data dot frame I'll apply and now the uh, data set so the data set is date uh, is WDBC WDBC but we need to remove the first variable here in this case comma minus one because this is not something we need to normalize it's a factor variable but not a numerical variable so that's why I am doing that and the next thing I want to apply is the function name which is nothing but data underscore norm all right so I am 
good here let's hit enter wdbc underscore norm now let's quickly see the difference so if i just expand it the, the thing i want to show you is let's say we want to take a summary from the first data set which is wdbc and we want to take a summary of let's say two to five variable and if i hit the summary it you can see what v3 is having the range from 6 to 28 and v6 is having the range from 143 to 2501 but now if i go and take the summary from the normalized data set which is wdbc underscore norm and from one to four because in the norm variable if you remember i have excluded the first variable so that's why i'm taking one to four but not two to five so if i hit enter now you can see all the values that I have is within the range of 0 and 1. And that is what it is important to apply before you go ahead and apply the uh, KNN algorithm on the data. So after this, the next step is to create the training and test data set. And here in this case, uh, let's create underscore training. And uh, since it has 569 observation, what we will do is we will say that uh, maybe uh, 1 to 450 uh, I'm sorry uh, 1 to 450 observation that means the rows we want in the uh, training data set underscore norm I need to write and I hit enter WDBC underscore test data set should have the remaining that means there is a good portion that we are taking in the training data and in the even in the test data set, we are taking almost more than 100 observations, so we should be good over here. WBDC underscore norm, and we need from 451 to 569, comma, and I hit enter. After this, uh, what I want, so after this, uh, the next thing is to apply it in the algorithm. So WDBC underscore PRET to predict the value. Uh, but before that, we need to import the library which is class so once we do that we are good wdbc underscore thread and we'll say knn within the knn we need to specify train test so training is uh, wdbc underscore train wdbc underscore test and the labels for the training data which is in the wdbc uh, 1, 2, 4, 50, comma, 1. That means the labels are present in the WDBC data set from which we created the normalized data set and that's why I'm not choosing the WDBC from values 1 to 4, 50 because that is what it is present in the training data set, the, the one which we earlier created uh, over here, 1, 4, 4, 50, comma, 1. And after that, we need to specify the value of K so as you can see we have 569 observation and if we take a square root of that that will be somewhere around uh, 20 21 or 22 so let's say we give it a value of 21 is something we want to start with so if i hit enter that's the command we executed and after this uh, what you want to do is you want to validate the predicted labels with the uh, actual labels so here based on the training data set it created the uh, it created the model and applied it on the wdbc test data and gives us the prediction in this object after this uh, we want to take the labels from the wdbc data set which we took it for the uh, test data that means labels from 451 to 516 and validate it with the prediction so for that we will write the table command and we will say wdbc underscore Fred and the next is basically WDBC uh, values which is 451 to 569 and first value we want to take it if I hit enter and as you can see these are the prediction predicted uh, out target variable values these are the uh, actual values what it is basically saying that there are total 94 values which are under B and out of that it correctly predicted 92 values but it did the wrong job or not so good job in predicting two values where you know it was under b but it incorrectly predicted under 
m but here in this case of m tar m value from the target variable all the values are correctly predicted in the uh, actual uh, or as the values which are present in the test data so as you can see here the test accuracy should be somewhere around 98 to 99% where out of uh, uh, somewhere around 100 variables or 100 data points so 451 to 569 is little bit above so you can say around 119 data points uh, it has predicted almost around 117 data points correctly which is 99% or 99 point some percent accuracy with which it is giving the result. Another thing you can do is um, you can play with the k value which is k is equal to maybe 15, 19 or 25 where you are creating more and more neighbors or picking up more and more neighbors and creating a groups and then doing the prediction. So may, it may happen that in such cases you may get all the values correctly predicted but that sometimes lead to some sort of overfitting issues. So that's why uh, we, mean, we may need to test with little bit more uh, samples and more data, uh, more you know data so that your predictions in one scenario if it is coming 99% then in other scenarios also it should come with uh, 99% and if that happens then your model is fine and can go ahead and work in the real-time condition but that's all I wanted to show you uh, about uh, the KNN algorithm